Are you struggling to use forms inside of SmartSuite? Maybe you're just new to no-code tools like this in general, and you're not exactly sure how to ask other people to fill out information for you. This is exactly what forms are built for, so if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting, and we make it our mission to help you get organized and automated with no-code tools. And at the forefront of these no-code tools, heading into 2023, we have SmartSuite, an incredible opportunity for you to get more organized inside of this relational database and start collaborating better with your team. Now, before we hop into the heart of the video, I want to invite you to follow along with me by starting out with SmartSuite already. If you don't already have an account, consider using our affiliate link below. Number one, you can follow along easily and I'm going to show you exactly how we can install a template together. But also, if you're interested in upgrading to SmartSuite in the future, when you do that, after using our affiliate link, you will be granted some exclusive swag from SmartSuite that you can't get anywhere else. They have made this offer specifically for our viewers, so be sure to grab that opportunity by snagging that link below and getting started with SmartSuite on a free account today. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of this and we're gonna just pop on into my screen here. Here I am on my SmartSuite dashboard. Now I already have the solution installed here that I wanna use for today's example. But if you don't already have inventory tracking, the fastest way to do this if you're following along is to just slip on down to the template gallery. And here you're gonna see a bunch of templates that SmartSuite has already created for us. You can search for this template, just type in inventory and this is what we're looking for. This is the inventory tracking template. Now, it doesn't exactly matter if you're using this template or not because the forms that you can build in SmartSuite are incredibly versatile. So let's go ahead and hop on into that actual solution. Here I am inside of my inventory tracking and I'm gonna pop into purchase orders for this example. So here inside of purchase orders, you're gonna see a couple things. Number one, I've got an order number. So it's just automatically ticking up every time there's a new order. This is an auto-generated field type. I also have an order date here. So this is just a date field. I also have a status, I have a product and a quantity, and then we have a total price here. And if we drill into total price, you'll see it's actually a formula. We're using the quantity multiplied by the unit cost of each product because we know these products and we know their cost. So we can derive the total price then, and we also have an arrive by date. So let's imagine that here we are inside of this order process and we want to say, hey, we want you, customer, to be allowed to access our website or somehow access our form link and tell us what you want to order. What's the item you want to order and how many of them do you want to order? This is a perfect use case for a smart suite form. So let's go ahead and get started by creating our form view. So we go into the upper left corner and wherever we have our views here, you can see I'm currently on a view called main view. But what we're gonna do is create a new view down here. When we mouse over the create new view, we get a bunch of different view types. And the only key takeaway from views is that each view allows us to see data that lives in this application in a slightly unique way. So here, what I'm looking at on my screen, this is actually a grid view. But in our case, we want to build a new view type and we're gonna pick form. You can see when we hover over this that we say that a form allows us to collect data from external users so they don't have to be smart suite users and we will be sharing a link to a responsive form or embedding it on an existing website. So a couple of options in terms of how we wanna give people access to this form. Let's go ahead and create this form view and the next thing we're asked to do is name this. So I could say new order. And we also have to choose if we want this to be public or private. Now this will really matter depending on if you are collaborating with other people in this particular application. So here I have the public option. Any member here with full access or above can edit and save changes to the view. And maybe I don't want that. Maybe I wanna lock this view down so that other people can't go and make changes and tweak the settings. In that case, I can set it to private which says then that only I can edit and save changes to this view. So make sure to make the selection that makes the most sense for your use case. But here we are in a form view. I probably just wanna create it once and roll with it. So let's go with private and I'll create the view. 
Now what we have is the ability to start customizing this form. By default, we're asked to edit the logo here. It shows up as Smart Suite logo, but we can change that. We can go in, edit the logo. I'll go ahead and add my logo here. Click here and I can find it on my computer somewhere in my downloads. Let's go ahead and search for that. And once we find the file we're looking for, we can just go ahead and upload this right there to the form. It'll take just a minute and pretty soon that will be replaced here. So we have a little bit of customization there. Now we can also change the title here so I can say, please enter your order. And we can add a little description here below, description here, you get the idea. So beyond this, we have the ability to add HTML blocks. So this is a really nice feature if we want to snazz up our form a little bit more with some static data. We can add this little HTML block and when I do that, we get this element and we can start by typing a slash and this is going to show us some different commands. Again, this is allowing us to insert those static elements in our form that we are not going to necessarily want to have change every time. So for example, we might enter in a divider line. There we go. Nice little divider line. We can also edit up the text color, the code or add a code block, um, create a link here embolden the text or use headers, get, uh, get fancy with that. So whatever static elements we want to add to this form to just make it a little more robust and a better viewer experience, it's right here in that HTML block. Now, we also have the ability to add fields from our application. So in our case, we are asking them, well, how many uh, items do you want? What's the quantity? And also, what is the product that you're looking for? So we can add product here. This is a link to a different application and then we can also add the quantity. So there we go. Those are the two elements that we need for our form. Uh, we'd also probably want to know things like who are you? What's your email address? But I'm just using this as a simple example. So with these two pieces now moving over here, we can also mark them as required. So if we want to say, hey, you can't submit this form without having all the information filled out, it's a simple toggle. And you'll see that when I toggle that on, the field then is marked as required. We can also reorder all of this, including the HTML block. So I might want to, for the sake of you know demonstration here, add another HTML block to the very top. And I'll say something like quantities of five are discounted or multiples of five. So you get the idea. I can include some other text here if I'd like. Now, I also want to point out that in those slash commands, we also have this callout and the callout is pretty fancy because we can write something right here in the callout. So maybe I wanted this text, for example, inside of my callout. Uh, I can just paste it in there and I have the ability to mark it as a different element of a callout. So it can be a note, it can be success, it can be warning, error, or decision. And the value in here, especially in the form, is that we're changing the background color here so we can add a little bit of extra flavor to this form. So let's say I wanted to keep that in the call out here and I'm just saying, hey, multiples of five are discounted. Now I might also want to change the name of this particular field. Do note that this won't change the name of the field in the application. Instead, it just changes essentially the field of information that we're asking here in the form. But again, this form element, the field, will still map precisely to the element that we brought in. We might also want to come in here and enter some help text, so to guide our users along. So I might say something like whole numbers only. Uh, so as, as if to say like you can't uh, enter decimals here, right? Uh, enter whatever you want there. I'll delete this for now, but you get the idea. You have the ability to change both the name here of the field as it shows up in the form and also add some help text and then we're off to the races. Now, the last piece here that you can customize, of course, is the submit button itself. So I could say enter here or whatever you want it to say here at the bottom. So once we're happy with the way the form is set up, Let's flip over to settings and notice that we can then uh, get the choice of what happens after the form is submitted. So by default, we can enter a display message. So I can say something like, thanks for your submission or thanks for your info. We can also opt to redirect to a URL. So maybe you want them to go to a specific URL in your process. That way they can fill out something else or take the next step. And in that case, you can just put that URL in here, but I'll keep it with the display message for now. And from here, we are now ready to share our form. So let's go ahead and in the upper left corner, go up to share. And we have two options available to us currently. We can share the form directly. And here's the link right here. So we can just copy and paste this link and share it with whomever we would like to start having fill out information here. 
Or alternatively, we can embed this in a website. So we can grab this iframe, little snip of code, and embed this in a website of our choosing, and then people can visit that website to fill out our form. Now, the important thing to note is that when people fill this out and submit this information, it will automatically create a new record inside of our Smart Suite app. We don't have to build any fancy automation for this to happen. It is the very function of the form. So when the form is submitted by anyone outside of our organization or inside, anyone submitting the form at all is going to automatically create a record inside of our application. So let's take this out for a spin. I'm going to actually open up this form in a new page here, and we're going to be able to preview the live version of the form. So you'll see that multiples of five are discounted here. Uh, we can enter in a quantity. Let's make it 102 and we'll pick a product here. And once we make this selection, this is actually accessing our other application. If you'll remember back in our solution, we have two different applications. I'm looking to fill out an order on my purchase orders, but I'm linking that back to my inventory. And so here I'm actually looking at things in my inventory. So let's say I put in 102 uh, socks. So I can go ahead and enter here. And when we're done here, we can flip back into our Smart Suite solution. And let's go back into any one of our views. And here we're going to have that new piece of information. So there's the socks I just submitted. I don't yet have an order date but you see that it's already linked to the product here and we have the right quantity. Those are the two pieces of information that we asked for in the form. Now, to make your forms a little more robust, I wanna point out a really cool feature of SmartSuite that we don't have anywhere else. That is the ability to choose default settings for practically all of the fields that we use inside of SmartSuite. So you'll notice that right now, I don't have an order date filled out here. Well, I would really love it if when somebody submitted the form, it automatically gave it an order date of today's date. That would be great. You'll also notice that the status here is already set to processing. And this is because of the same thing that I'm describing, the fact that we've already established a default setting for this particular field. So if we look at the status field and we go over to the defaults section of this, you'll see that as soon as a new record comes into existence, if it doesn't have a status already assigned to it, the status will be upgraded to processing. And so we can make a selection here of any of our different status and just pick that. But in our case, we're saying, hey, look, this is a new purchase order. We wanna make sure that people assign it the processing status so that we can move it through our process. So let's do something similar here for our order date. We can click on here, go into defaults for this date field, and you'll see that right now it's set up to not have a default date, but, that's not what I want. I can make the selection to be today, to be today plus a certain number, or to be a specific date. So I can set this so that anytime a new record comes into existence, we have a specific date of January 1st, 2028. Or I could say today plus seven days, or I could just say today, which is exactly what I want. So let's go ahead and update this field and we can actually test this little feature out and we'll reopen our form here. Going back here, we'll click here to submit another response and reload our form. And now we're gonna order 58 of our t-shirts. Let's go ahead and enter here and flip back into our database. Here I am and now we see that the order date was filled out. As of today's recording, it is December 31st and that is exactly what is showing up right here. So this is a great thing that you'll want to utilize when you're creating your forms because a lot of times you won't want people to fill out certain information when you already know it. Today's date, you already know it. There's no reason to ask that information on the form. Also, we already know the status. When a new order is received, we know we want to put it into processing, so we're not going to ask that on the form. Make sure that you're using this particular default field feature alongside of your forms so that you're streamlining the process for the people who are using your forms and everybody is going to be happier and better off. Hey, I know we covered a lot in this video and we went fast. If you have questions, feel free to drop them below and we'll do our absolute best to answer those. Also, if you haven't already started in SmartSuite and this piqued your interest, please do consider using our link. Again, that link will be found below this video. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss out on future no-code news just like this. That's it for this one. I will see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found this to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website to see how we can help. We offer an exclusive free training that teaches the fundamentals of no-code tools, including automation. 
We also have some paid services available, including advanced courses, no-code hourly consulting, as well as custom project consulting. So swing on by to get the help you need, and we look forward to connecting with you soon.